Have you just purchased a new Vortex Pergola and are wondering how you get it from the box to standing tall in your outdoor space? Or are you just interested in how a pergola is assembled? In this video, we'll show you how to build a Vortex Pergola. Hi, I'm Hamish and this is Jake, and together we're going to show you how to put a pergola together step by step. Today we're using the 4600 model, but you can also use this video to assemble the 33 and the 3400 models. Before we start, there's some important points you need to know. We're building this pergola in one of our Spa World showrooms and taking our health and safety seriously as a team. Please do the same for your installation. Please read the entire user manual to familiarise yourself with the features of this product and take the appropriate safety precautions while assembling these steps. Wear protective shoes and glasses. Don't install the pergola in wind, rain or icy conditions. Look out for overhead or buried cables and don't touch cables with aluminium parts and beams. Keep children away from assembly processes and the plastic bags. Don't lean on the pergola columns while assembling. Make sure there's no cables underground before positioning the column. Pergola columns must be secured into position on a flat, level, structurally compliant surface. Don't position the pergola under trees. If you have a swim spa or are ordering one, you must install the swim spa before assembling the pergola. You need a minimum of three people to install a pergola. We recommend one for measuring and marking, one for installation, and one as an assistant. Most of the work is done standing on a ladder, so having a few extra hands will make the task easier and save you a lot of time. Depending on your pergola model, location, and the technical ability of the people installing the pergola, assembly can take between four to eight hours. Allow up to one hour to take all of the components out of their packaging because every component has protective plastic stuck to it. Quick tip, use this time to check that you have all of the parts displayed in the manual. To make it easier, we recommend that you lay out all of the parts pictured in the manuals in groups, the same way as they are displayed in the instructions. You must consult with your local council and an engineer to establish if the installation location and the foundation comply with your local regulations. You will need your electrician to connect the power from the house to the leads of the motor that run down the inside of the posts of the bagola. If you're connecting the bagola columns directly to the concrete or a similar kind of base, use the pre-punched holes on the supplied base. We've got all of our gear laid out here and we'll quickly take you through and make sure you've got everything. For safety gear, we have our safety hats, safety glasses and gloves, and then we also have our two ladders. For tools, uh, with regards to measuring tools, make sure you have at least a five metre tape measure, a spirit level and then a builder's square. We've got a 13 and then a 17 mil wrench. We've then got a 10 mil drill bit, obviously with a drill, a rubber mallet. We have a pencil, a sealant gun, and then also some marine grade sealant. Quick tip, it's way faster if you get a hex five for your drill when you're doing up those Allen bolts. We've laid out all of our parts here and put them into groups. Just as a reminder, this is for the 4600 Vortex Pergola. If you have a different size pergola, you'll have different part numbers, but it'll all work the same. So we've grouped them here into A, B, C, D, and E, and then parts one through 18 on the floor here. All right, now we're ready to get started. Step one is assembling the posts. For this step, we have all the parts laid out in front of us. There's 12 parts to the step. First, there is six connecting posts from A1 to A6. We then have parts number one, which is six connecting base plates. You need to connect the base plates to the bottom of the posts. The first thing you do is undo the Allen bolts, align the base plate with the bottom of the post, and connect the Allen bolts to the bottom of the base plate. So you want to repeat this step six times so all the base plates are connected to the post connections. Ensure that these Allen bolts are as tight as you can possibly get them. It's your only chance that you're going to get to make sure that they're tight and this base is what is going to secure the pergola to your foundation. Thank you. 
Okay, now that we've got the base plates assembled, we can go on to step two, which is assembling the beams. We have them laid out on the floor here, parts one, two, four, and five. And these will assemble the long side of the pergola. With the posts here, you can see there are a few different types. These corner ones are obviously for the corner parts of the pergola. And then these straight end ones here are for the middles of the pergola. When attaching to the sides here, the side with three holes in it will attach to the corner part, and then the other end with two holes in it will attach to the center part. When you're putting up the pergola and putting up these beams, make sure that the side with this groove down it is on the inside of the pergola, so that this flush side here is on the outside. So we have the corner posts and the center posts all laid out with the beams. We are going to assemble the beams into the posts. The next step is to undo all the bolts at the top of the posts. The next step is to connect the beam to the corner post. So slot the beam into the connector and align the holes so that they match and then insert the bolt into the three pre-drilled holes. Again, repeat the same step as just before, but with the center post. Just remember that with all of these beams, there is actually a hole at the top of the beam uh, where you'll screw into the top of the post as well as the two front ones for the center post and the three front ones for the corner posts. So take the screws out, put the beam into the center post, lining up the holes, and then put those screws through. Now we're going to attach the other side beam into the center post. And now I'm just going to fit the final corner post to the beam, aligning up the holes, making sure that I have the four bolts all positioned and nice and secure. Um, again, once they're in position, they are hard to tighten up again, so make sure they're tight. All right, now that we've finished the first long side of the pergola, we're gonna do the exact same, but just the other way around. So we've now completed fitting all the beams to the, to the posts. The next step is to quickly undo all of the remaining Allen bolts before we lift it up. This is also the point where we should start to wear our safety hats. All right, we've got all the posts set up and ready to go, ready to lift up. We've got our hard hats on. We've got a third man, Jamie, in to give us a hand as well. So let's lift those posts up. Part three of the build is assemble the hooked beams. For this section, you are going to need six parts. You are looking for two beams with hooks, B3 and B6. Part two is the post top covers, and there are four of these. Then grab two ladders, putting them either side on one of the ends of the pergolas, and we're gonna grab the beam B3 or B6. These are the beams with hooks. You can tell which ones they are and which way they go as the hook part is on the inside of the pergola. This is also evidence where there's four screws on the inside.
Now we just need to attach the post top covers to the top of the post with the Allen bolts. Step four is assembling the middle beam. The only part you'll need for this is part B7, which is the middle beam. When putting the middle beam up, it's important to ensure that the tracks the louvers sit in are facing the same way on this middle beam as they are in the two end beams that we've just put up. To attach the middle beam, we're going to have to undo the four Allen bolts. Two on the side here and two on the top. Insert the middle beam, B7. Screw Allen bolts into position. So we don't know what your foundation is like at home, so if you haven't already, partially secure your pergola to the ground. To fix the pergola to the ground, you are going to need 34 parts. Part A, this is the gasket for adjusting the height. There are 10 of these. Part 18, this is the anchor bolt. There are 24 of these. Tip, use the gasket under the base to adjust the height for slightly uneven foundation. We recommend a concrete slab for your foundation. However, as mentioned in the video earlier, you must consult with your local council and have an engineer to determine the correct insulation, location and foundation to comply with your local regulations. For a concrete foundation, move the pergola to the correct position. Then mark the bolt positions. There are four around each post. Mark these with a pencil. Remove the pergola. Using the electric drill, drill holes where you made the marks with your pencil. Move the pergola back into position. Secure the pergola base plate with the anchor bolts. Safety note, securing your pergola properly is extremely important. Any damage incurred or caused by the pergola detaching from its foundation due to natural disasters, high winds or other extreme weather events is not covered and is the responsibility of the homeowner and the installer. It is not covered under the manufacturer's warranty. Check the stability of the pergola regularly. For this step, you will need two of part D1, the driving blade. Click the driving blade D1 directly into the seventh groove of B3, B6 and B7. You will need eight parts. Part D2, this is the strengthened blade. There are two of these. Part 11, this is the strengthened pivot pin. There are two of these. Part seven, this is the M10 screw cap. There are two of these. Part 12, this is the locking nut. There are two of these. Other end of strengthened blade, D2, clicks directly into the groove on the center beam, B7. Connect one end of strengthened pivot pin, part 11, with the M10 screw cap, part seven. Push the strength pivot pin, parts 11 and seven, through the hole in the beam. This will be either part B3 or B6, and connect it to the strength blades, part D2. Lock with locking nut, part 12. You will need 38 parts. Part four, the cap clips. Part five, plastic spacers. Part six, clips. 
Part D3, common blades. And part E, control rod F. Install the first six common blades, D3. Click directly into the groove on the beams. This is the time to insert part E. Pass the clips through the holes in each louver end. These go through the control rod, labelled as part E, the plastic spacer and the blade cap. Tighten with the cap clips. Repeat on the other side of the common blade. Repeat these steps until all louvers are installed. Tip, install two or three common blades, part D3, at a time before putting the clip on each end. If you install the louvers all at once, there won't be any room to add the clips or reach the connection points. Now that we've completed the first side on the 4600 model, we are going to repeat exactly the same steps on the other side. You should be able to open and close the louvers now by hand once all the louvers are installed and connected. Move the louvers to the fully closed position by hand. We then have four rubber fix parts for the gutter. These are going to go on the outside four posts. So we're now going to fit the rubber grommet part three into the corner post. This is part 17, the pipe fitting. For the 4600 model which we're installing here, we have two of these. These two parts go on the corners where the motors are and fit inside the rubber corner bracket. This will stop water flow from getting into that post and getting onto the cables. After this is installed in that rubber corner bracket, we recommend running some silicon around the outside just to further help waterproof it and stop any water getting down that post. So we've run the cable down the post and you'll see at the bottom there is an exit hole for the cable to come out. So using a blunt object, just pull through the power cable at the bottom of the post. Once you've installed the motor on the other end of the pergola, this is a good time to get your electrician in. Now that we've done all the louvers, it's time to install the gutters. So for this step, we have 12 parts. We have four short gutters. These are parts C1, C2, C4, and C5. We then have two sets of longer gutters. C3 and C6 are designed for the outside of the pergola, and these are to allow the motor to slide inside them. C7 and C8, the other two long gutters, are designed for the centre length of the pergola. Okay, now that we've installed the gutter, we're going to reattach the motor to the beam. Move the motor drive shafts all the way to the in position. Note, you will need power connected to the motor to get the shaft in. Attach the motor, part 10, to the beam, B3 and B6, and attach the motor shaft at the end of the motor using the screw and nut, part 14, to the drive lever. Now you can test the opening and closing of the louvers with the remote control. All 
All right, now that we have the gutter up and the motor reconnected in both places, we're going to attach the LED lighting. Uh, so you'll have one cable coming out of the gutter for the LED and one coming up from the post. Uh, so all you have to do is click those together. And then there's a wee thread as well. Make sure to do that up nice and tightly. Then before leaving this, you want to grab your remote and just double check that that all works. Nice. <laughs> now that this side's all done, we're going to do the exact same for the opposite side. If you want to use sealant to increase the durability of your pergola, this is how you do it. You'll need to use the sealant in all eight corners of the pergola. This is around all of the brackets leading into the location of the gutters. Once the electrician has completed the connection, you can install the receiver. This sticks on with two strips of double-sided tape. This is the receiver. The top button with the up arrow on it is for opening up the louvers. The middle button there with the dash across it stops the movement. The next button down with the bottom arrow is for closing the louvers. And then the very bottom button with the light beside it is for turning the LED lighting on and off. This is the remote for the pergola and it controls the pergolas the exact same as the receiver. Please note that if you have the 4600 model pergola, you will have two remotes, one for each side. Super simple controls, the top button with the up arrow is for opening up the louvers. The middle button with the dash is for stopping the movement. The next button down with the down arrow is for closing the louvers. And then at the bottom you have the wee light button which turns on the LEDs. Let's try that out now. I'll shut this side here and I'll press that light button to turn on the LEDs. Easy as that. If you have any troubleshooting questions, have a look in the user manual or feel free to contact one of our friendly customer care team members. Congratulations, your pergola installation is complete. Before you start using your pergola, there's some important advice to know about. Check the screws are tight and a reminder to check the screws at least once a year. If the weather forecast is for strong winds over 80 kilometers an hour or snowfall, make sure you open your louvers. Don't open or close blades in frost or snow. Make sure the seals are in all good condition and not vulnerable to leaks. Clean debris such as fallen leaves regularly to prevent from them blocking the drain. Any damage caused by extreme weather conditions or abuse by the owner won't be covered under warranty. Thanks for watching this video. We hope it's helped you understand and made you feel confident in assembling your Vortex Pergola. Whether it's the 4600 model we've used to demonstrate or one of the many other Vortex Pergola models. Have you purchased or are thinking of buying optional blinds for your pergola? Watch this video to learn how to assemble the blinds to your pergola. For more information, visit the Learning Centre on our website, or you can contact the Sparwheel showroom near you and speak to one of our friendly team members.